Well, happy Saturday morning, people. It's a rainy Saturday morning here in Ohio, although I think the major part of the rain for today is done. Just went through this morning. And we got a happy Saturday for me on schedule as well. Uh, however, there's, <laughs> there's only four people in the chat. Um, this is the second stream in a row where we've only had like three people in the whole chat. What's going on Saturdays? I did notice that uh, Ivy's been missing. So Jason, if you're here or you're listening, I wrote Ivy on uh, <clears throat> Discord and uh, no response. So hope Ivy's good. I know she's working or something, but... <clears throat> Yeah, uh, well, whoa, we just got five viewers, all right. <laughs> so the, the usual suspects are here. Para has showed up. Uh, unfortunately, he's working, right? And it sounds like uh, Mr. Colin Blimey is sick. So that is uh, unfortunate as well. So let's just plug through this. We do have a hodgepodge. Uh, we haven't had a hodgepodge in a bit, uh, but well, maybe a month or so, two months. Uh, but this hodgepodge is full of the regulars, uh, though the regulars all kind of have similar connections in some of the styles that they like, and they also have very different connections. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, hodgepodges were picked for today. Um, let me just say before we get started with this, the schedule, if you have not seen it and what's on there, today we have the hodgepodge. And then we have uh, Colin next Saturday, April 6th, with a uh, newish kind of set, but it's still a Colin set. And then we have the older new 10 winners, which are Michael, Para, Sasha, Ba. Well, someone's going to fill in for me because I'm giving mine away uh, to Scott K. Because I just don't, I honestly thought, I, I don't know any really headbanger, banger, banger, banger song. So I'm going to give it to somebody that might. So, um, Let's see, and then after that would be April 13th, uh, or those, that's April 13th is the older new set, 10 winners. April 20th is uh, Colin and Sasha dual set number two. Sasha got pissed off and <clears throat> said we have to do this again. And then on Saturday, April 27th, we have Ivy has a song that she really wants us to listen to, as well as a new band, I think they're from Brazil, if I catch that correctly that asked us to have their new single that's coming out, I think, on Monday on the channel and uh, react to it. So we will do that uh, on the 27th. And I'm sure some sets on Mondays will happen in between here and there. So, all right. Well, people, let's get into this. Um, who is going to be first? Uh, up first is Mr. Paravarium, who supposedly is at work right now. I think I know what this one is because we had a chat on Discord about it, and I'm loving it and ready to go for it. So this is what Para says. He says, here's the final part of Charcoal Grace 4, part sweet. Um, Give Me Hell is the name of the song by, of course, our own Caligula's Horse. Although the other tracks do make it better, it still stands well on its own. And I had meant to uh, listen to the rest of everything on the new album, but I have it. I actually have it. I kind of forgot about it, to be honest. Uh, and I'm not as um, committed or dedicated to listening to music as you guys are. Uh, that was part of the reason for this channel, is outside of like making an effort like this channel of people requesting songs to me, I probably wouldn't spend a ton of time searching for new songs and new bands and stuff like that. So I meant to do it, but I, did, I do other things than sit down and listen to music. So I'm happy that I actually get to listen to this, and this will remind me to uh, give the rest of the album uh, a listen after we do Give Me Hell by none other than The Boys from Down Under, Caligula's Horse. I fucking love these guys. And I, I'm guessing if this is part four of the suite that uh, it's going to be excellent. So here we go. Good already. There's that nice Sam like do 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 do. He likes that. It's kind of like a toots. Nice. Oh, I love that. 
Jin, 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 Jin. Love that. that. That switch to this nice kind of open-ended happy chord. It's a very happy chord choice. say this and I don't know why I haven't said it before. I think I did say it when we listened to Golem. I don't like the vocal mixing on this as much. And I know they do everything on purpose, so I know this is a choice by Jim. And I, I just... Like, this one sounds okay, but a lot of it just sounds so distinct from the music versus Splendid for me. And I love Jim, but I want him to, like, blend with the music. This is fucking why I love these guys so much. I just their their ability to fucking make chords that are just transcendent. Fucking gorgeous vocal melodies. I love these guys so much. And it just, this, the sound, they have a Caligula's horse sound, which I've said many, many times. Sam especially, just his writing style. And this, like, literally brings me right back to the concert in Pittsburgh. Yeah, definitely out of uh, all of these, Storm Chaser is the more vibey, chill one. Mute is like a little bit more than Storm Chaser, but this one's definitely more of the ballsy. Um, it's got the word hell in it, so. What's up, Herman? Oh, think, 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 think. Ah, oh, there's the, there's the beauty Ivy. Ivy, welcome back. Beautiful, absolutely fucking beautiful. Mm. And I love when they do these stutters. Sam Solo. S squared. Mmm, this is much more feely solo. Woo! I love his his balance between like techie runs and just yeah. Sam Solo.
Is that it? That's rather short for a Caligula's Horse song. There are at least eight minutes. Wow, that's it. That makes me even like it more because they just fucking accomplished what they just accomplished in a shorter time period. And I, I don't mind them going eight to ten minutes because they always pull it off perfectly. But to have it shorter and still sound like that and accomplish that is, is yeah, this definitely... Yeah, I'm glad we got to listen to this. Again, I'm not trying to bring up past history, but I like that I got to listen to this on the stream and not on my own because I can tell other people are feeling it too. And of course, feeling it, which is one of the great things about concerts, with other people at the same time is is, is just as amazing. Uh, so, yeah, that's... Uh, I, I honestly have not even looked at like the album tracking list so if this is a suite of four, uh, World Breeze With Me is the first song on, this, on the album, right? So how does it go as far as the suite? Uh, if somebody could list the songs real quick. Like where does this one fall in the four? Because uh, I know it's a progression. Uh, I will say I still think Storm Chaser is my favorite song. It's going to be, I don't, it's going to be tough to beat that song. That song has everything. Like it just has everything. But it is more on the ballad side, if anything, than it is on this one, which is much more on the heavier, like, genty, rocky side, which is fucking, this is going on at the gym. And, man, their ability to fucking capture emotion, I, I just can't say it enough. Their ability to capture emotion is, for me, it's, it's no, no band comes even close, not even close. Other bands capture moments of emotion, but these guys take you on a ride for the whole fucking song that just makes my heart just like pace. It's like, oh, this is my favorite band. I'm sorry, you guys. This is my favorite band. <laughs> these guys are so good. And that song, though, had some differences, is just like a typical Caligula's Horse song. Like, the, yeah. I do wish in this album... The, the mixing of the, especially on Golem. I felt like Golem, you're like, what the hell is he even saying? Like, I can't hear him very well. Uh, I can just hear the notes. Uh, no, no one's going to beat DT, Scott. Uh, that's, but that's like a, a long withstanding thing. I mean, that's like, we're, we're talking 30 years. So um, they didn't get replaced. So let me restate that. Next to DT, who's going to be my all-time favorite band, no matter what, just because of the length and longevity this is my favorite band currently uh, in recent years. There, I said it. I cleared it up for you. Speaking of DT, I did see a post um, from Mike Portnoy that said that they have finished wrapping up the last song of the album. Uh, so that essentially means they, I think they went to the album uh, in January and it's only March. I'll be honest, you guys, I'm a little nerve. The fact that they got the album wrapped up that quickly written is not so much it is concerning to me uh because it makes me feel like what they just did is just like went in and like wrote what they're used to writing uh whereas like metropolis took them a year plus to write because they took their time really educated what they wanted to do thought it out put it together took the pieces apart and then put it back together I think them writing just quickly gives me a little bit of like, it's just going to sound like the rest of their stuff. Like, But they're going to say, of course, this is the best stuff we've ever written. This is going to be great. But I think when it comes out, it's going to be like, it's, uh, Portnoy adds a lot, but he doesn't, I, don't, I wonder if, if it's just past the prime and it's just going to be like, we'll get like three really good songs or four good songs and the rest is just going to be like, eh. I hope I'm wrong on that, but that's my feeling, the fact that they've wrapped it up already in three or four months of writing. That seems kind of weird. But anyway, uh, nice pick, Para. Thank you for picking it. Um, that is definitely going to be hard to beat in this set. That song is fucking balls to the wall. So love it, love it, love it. And uh, now I'm going to be putting that on a playlist, and probably today as I drive somewhere, I'm going to be listening to just the Caligula's Horse new album completely. All right, number two, so I don't keep talking so much, um, is Mr. S I think it's Scott K, right? Yes, Scott K is up next. Uh, he says, uh, the band is called 
Borknagar, B Borknagar, Bork, Borknagar, Bork, if it's Borknagar, that's the hickish, most hickish fucking name I've ever heard. It's a bunch of rednecks. Uh, song is called Moon. So, Borknagar with the moon. Please correct my pronunciation of that because I have no idea how you say that. Borknagar, <laughs> Borknagar, Bork, nah, don't make me say the other word. This is a standout song from their latest album, Fall. And this album really shows the range the band has to offer from black metal and progressive fusion. You guys, you guys in your freaking genre styles, black metal and progressive fusion, oh, to folk, to folk chanting and beyond. Wow, talk about a hodgepodge. This particular song, you'll be happy to hear, I'm sure, okay, is a very nice progressive song with clean lyrics. Woo! So Cap won't have to be embarrassed to show it to his friends. <laughs> Hopefully. Enjoy. All right, here we go, number two. Sounds like speed metal almost. Colin's there. Digging this so far. I would like it a little bit lower tempo, but slower tempo. This is good. It's got some energy. Nice run there. Ride in hi hat. Sixteenth note. What's up, Atharva? Haven't seen you in a bit, buddy. gonna go into a folky section <laughs> hey what's up Anthony welcome back buddy Yeah, it looks like we got 14 people in the chat. Welcome. You've like tripled our numbers. Cool bass line. sounding the guitars are it's got more of a chill vibe to it this is like a, I feel the beginning was a little energetic but this is definitely more chilly Yeah, Adrian, I would agree. I feel like the song is getting better so far as it goes. Up, 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 up. 
This reminds me of that middle section in Panic Attack. I'm not on the drums. Look at Colin throwing a bone to Scott K. <laughs> this song, a part of a life. There's that tickety bit, tickety bit. There it is. He's almost got like a. Yeah, I hear the folk presence in his voice sometimes, the way he sings something. Almost like a Irish jig or something. And I think the engineering quality sound on this is really good. Is at the end? Or we're gonna go into another section. I think that's the end. All right. Uh, like the song, but obviously I'm going to go with uh, the first song because it's Caligula's Horse and it's an awesome song. Uh, that song, as everybody is saying in the chat, uh, kind of grew on me, so I'm happy about that. Um, but Caligula's Horse is Caligula's Horse. Uh, I probably... I, I might have... I, I mean, that might go on a playlist. Uh, I'll have to listen to it again, obviously, and, and make my decision, but it's right on teetering on going on a playlist because nothing really special about the song, but definitely a good vibe, like that it was clean, and the fact that Scott K turned that kind of song in makes it even just have to get on a playlist. <laughs> just um, I did want to say this before I forget. Ivy, I wrote you on Discord and you didn't respond, so I'm saying it now. Uh, I need the email with the link to the song i think you might have sent it but it's not in my inbox so i don't know what happened to it or if you didn't send it but can you please send it again for uh that next for the song that you uh wanted to submit so please do that uh and the other thing too is i thought it was really weird um i don't know if it was just coincidence but uh i'm gonna blame herman michael herman for this so the last stream we did, uh, the cover, because since it was Michael Herman's set, that I put on there as the cover for the set was that chick that he loves, the guitarist chick. Uh, where is she from, Herman? Tell everybody what her name is and where she's from, because she is cute. Uh, and I remember saying, Michael, this is like the best set you've ever turned in. Every song on there I like and I did like. And this, the, the live set has like dislikes on it. And I lost seven subscribers this past week. <laughs> so I don't, know, I don't know what happened with that set in particular, but since that set dropped, that set got some dislikes, which we never typically get dislikes because the only people who do the likes are the people that are on this channel. So it got two dislikes, I don't know why. And then I lost seven subscribers this week, which is quite a bit compared to the fact that I don't get a lot of subscribers or lose them. And the only thing I can think is, is it because the cover is of this really cute girl and people who randomly might have, but they wouldn't be subscribers anyway, randomly like tuned in, were pissed off that it wasn't some hot chick playing guitar. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think is the whole freaking set. I was like, these are these songs are awesome. Like, what was there to dislike about what I said? Are they mad that I liked the songs that they didn't? It's a little weird. But anyway, I don't know how I'm scaring people away. I didn't literally say anything that scared anybody away last week. But it scared away seven. So, <laughs> All right, let's get on to the next one. The next one up is Mr. Colin Blimey Compton. All right, he says, for the purpose of this, 
Alrighty, folks, take a journey back in time with me. The song we're about to listen to came out when I was a mere 19-year-old bloke. <laughs> back then, I was deep into melodic death metal as my go-to subgenre of choice. Bands like In Flames, Children of Bodom, and the band we are about to listen to were in my heavy rotation. You'll hear just a hint of the power metal sound. Colin, what the... In this song that I would later in full life fully embrace. So the band is called Solution 45, or 44, 45 caliber. <laughs> Into Shadows is the name of the song. So here we go, number three. Oh, happy birthday, Atharva. I just saw that. Nice. Go live it up, dude. Whatever you do for living it up. As long as it's legal. <laughs> it doesn't hurt anybody else. Okay. This could be a gym song if it stays like this. That's where the power metal sound comes. Run. Very different from what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> Starts off with jun 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 jun. But I do like the sound. Nice switch up there. Wow. This is pretty good. Did I just hear a growl? <laughs> I'm, and now we're back into this section again. I'm liking this. This is good, Colin. I'm telling you right now, this is a battle between two and three for me. <laughs> Sasha. I'm digging this. What's up, Bryce? Welcome back. No. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. I like that. Get it. Get it. Get it. I love stutters for some reason. <laughs> Bryce, I just saw your singer puked up a yeah, it was really weird. It was like, what? <laughs> Airball? <laughs> Ariana Grant. <laughs> you come for me. Such Ah, oh, 
Herman. Thanks, thanks to your daughter. <laughs> Tell her the next good deed she has to do for the universe is like things <laughs> and comment. Ah, <laughs> uh, here we go. I see Adrian. I like the screams better than Adrian. You're so weird, dude. <laughs> His singing here is good. When he was like, ah, 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 ah. not good. Of course, Adrian loves it. Dichotomous Adrian. Hey Herman, tell your daughter she can turn in a song for free. Whatever it is, I'll review it and react to it for free. She likes music. She, I mean, she she comes from you. She better like music. Uh, yeah, this is tough because those last growls were not bad. They were not bad, but I, I, I would have preferred the song stay exactly where it was the first half. So because of that, it's going to go in third place for me. So yeah, I'm a, a one. Well, Adrian still puts number two above that one. Interesting. Even though he kind of liked it. I like the whole first half of the song and it, the, the growls, though, weren't horrible. They definitely weren't something that made me like the song more. That's the way I'll put it. So, because of that, um, yeah, it's not as high on the list. We'll see where it falls with the other two songs that we have for today. Uh, Michael, once again, I'm going to say it again. Tell your daughter if she wants to. Uh, any song, any genre, for free, I will react to it because... How, that'd be fun to hear what your daughter picks. Or maybe you're too scared for her to do that because <laughs> she might be, you might be like, oh, what's my daughter gonna pick for us to listen to? Hopefully you love it. Okay, let's uh, get to our number four song on the list, which is going to be Mr. Adrian Widener coming up for you. He says, my song for the upcoming hodgepodge is Closer to the End by Pyra Pyra Pyramid Theorem. Is that how you say it? Yeah. I always get Pyram Pyramaze and Pyr all that mixed up now because of the names. But it's Pyramid Theorem. Uh, it has some nice chunky riffage and some awesome proggy sections. Good. The vocals aren't really my favorite style, but they're not bad. I think you'll enjoy this one. Pyramid Theorem, Closer to the End. Is this a... Adrian beautiful ballad -y song or is this like a crazy weird song? Let's find out. Kind of like the album cover. All right, thank you, Ivy. I'll check it after the stream. Those symphonic choral sounds put it a little close to Nightwish. <laughs> Ooh, and we are at lower, slower tempo. Oh, is it shit? I'll uh. Uh, Scott K, no, but Nightwish fans do, yes. <laughs> you're, fu 
fucking beast of the harlot. Sweet, Herman. Looking forward to seeing what she sends. Just make sure it's very clear with the uh, usual uh, verbiage and link. Ooh, I like that. Chun, chun, chun. Sounds low. I'll turn it up. Is that better? Ooh, that was cool. <laughs> nice little fill there. That was an interesting uh, transcendent chord structure there. It wasn't quite like a normal... It was different. Ooh. That key... Yeah, this is the broggy section, I think. Love that. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, this is very Dream Theater esque, especially that choice of keyboard patch. Song is growing on me too. I even think the way it's sounding engineer wise is very DT ish. Yeah, this is very similar to DT. I'd say more to DT than Haken. At least that section was. Not so much this section. This part, I like it. A million people, the is Pyramid Theorem, closer to the end. <laughs> yeah, I'm not feeling this song as much either. I don't know why. I do like several parts in this song, but...
that's a tough one. Um, I definitely don't like this more than one or two, but I think I like it more than three. Sorry, Colin. <laughs> so my score is going to be... Iroke. Uh, um, yeah, like, I liked lots of parts of it, um, and I even liked the middle section. I, I, I definitely think I need to listen to this song more than one more time, because it had a lot of different changes and functions to it, so I think that's probably why it was hard for me to, like, connect to it right away. But we'll see on other listens. But as for now, on immediate first listen, which is what we're judging here, not a third or fourth listen, uh, I put this behind one and two. Which leaves us to our next and final hodgepodge song of the day. This is uh, Mr. Ryan. I'm a little nervous what's going to happen here. Uh, the song is called World Stops Turning, and the band is Alexis on Fire. It looks like it's all one word, too. Alexis on Fire. Just a chill song with feeling. Singer, songwriter, and guitarist for the band in City and Color Dallas Green is just incredible, has a great voice and soulful writing. Enjoy. That does not sound like a Ryan song description. So are you fucking with us? <laughs> Let's find out. Is this really going to be a Ryan song? He's totally dicking with us. I like it. I really like that. Doo -doo -doo. Definitely tuned down to a D, I think. Ryan, are you coming through today? Ryan, coming in with the so far, this might be the best song of the day. Uh, it's gonna be hard to be clear this way. Outside of that, it's just a known fact. Ooh. I like his voice too, it's interesting. I was just expecting like a flurry of notes and just terrible singing and this is quite the opposite. Scott, that used to be your uh, shtick. You like lower expectations so that it's much better even if it isn't because of the expectations you lowered. <laughs> this is great. Scott, if the band is not normally like this, the question is why? Because this is good. Interesting if this song doesn't change. I don't know how long it is either, so. It could be like two, the tale of two songs and go into something fucking nuts. I don't know, but if it stays like this, this is a great song. I like his voice. Ivy, I think that's perfectly said. It does sound like a movie track.
Nice. Man, I just, I feel like this would be a great getting high song, too. Those of you who smoke weed out there, you got your background track. Good song, Ivy, but to put this before the Queen of the song is nuts. This is like a very, very like slow burning song. This might be good for the campfire set. I'll have to think about that. It's definitely going on set. <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> oh, Sasha. Yeah, pretty boring. It is dragging a little bit. It is dragging a little bit. It needs to end sometime soon. Unless it goes into a different place, but if it just stays like this, it does need to end. You got a humor, buddy. They're definitely dragging this one out. How long is this song, man? <laughs> I like it, but it could end. It could end. Is it 17 minutes? Is it 17 minutes of this? Oh god, I hope not. Okay, it does sound like it's fading out into the beginning of the song. So hopefully it gives us another five minutes of the beginning. <laughs> My final is, I'm going to put this as my number two for today. I think one, five, and two possibly go on a playlist. Uh, I know one and five will go on a playlist. Two, I mean, I think all the songs today were decent. I'll say that. They were decent. Obviously, the, the Caligula's Horse song just is, was fucking beautiful. Skyrocket beautiful. 
Uh, five was good. Little long, little long, but it'll go on a playlist because the slow burning of, of it. I think it's a good campfire song. Uh, good build at the end, just dragging it out. Um, but this was a great hodgepodge. We it, it's it's nice when we do hodgepodges uh, because you do get an eclectic a kind of take on different songs. Uh, you kind of run the gamut, even with although that gamut is kind of like a riverside gamut where it's like within this range. It's not like one song is this song and the next song is like K-pop. <laughs> although uh, that's because of, due to the channel and the people who are on this channel, but. Uh, it would be nice to have even a huger range where uh, hopefully Michael Herman's daughter will turn in something that uh, just blows our wigs off. <laughs> All right, so uh, that brings us to an end. As I said, next week we have uh, Colin Crompton's set. Uh, it's kind of a newish set that he's doing, but it is a Colin normal set. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, there will probably be at some point a... Uh, I don't know, Casey Kasem's top 40 thrown in there somewhere in the next week or two uh, to get us to count down from 10 to 1. So have a great Saturday, and we will see you guys here next Saturday, uh, unless something pops up before that. Peace out.